My name is John Lutz. I teach history here at the University of Victoria and my principal area of research is history of race and racism, history of Aboriginal settler relations. The key themes in my field, and my field if you like, is the history of race and is within that, Indigenous settler relations. The key themes uh, is the discovery, I guess, in the last few decades that race is an invention, that race doesn't exist. Uh, and this um, is a result of, I guess, new scientific research that people are able to do genetic research after the Second World War. Uh, we went looking for the race gene, what makes whites different from blacks and Asians and, and uh, indigenous people. And when the scientists went looking, they could find nothing. There's nothing there. Uh, we all exist on a continuum of skin color, of hair texture, of um, bone structure. And uh, so uh, scientists, you know, decided that if you want to divide the world up, there are some clear categories. Some of us have a blood type uh, and others have another blood type. And that's definitive. You're, you're in one category or another. Or some people have blue eyes and some people have green eyes. Uh, you can divide people up that way. But race doesn't work as a division. And uh, so um, when we start to go looking for, well, then why do we organize our world along the lines of race? we find, as with so many things, the answer is historical. We look, go back into history and we find that race didn't actually exist as a word until the 18th century. And in the 18th century, it comes out of animal breeding, um, and uh, actually 17th century, it comes out of animal breeding and comes together with new discoveries as uh, Europeans are now spreading out around the world of voyages of exploration and coming across strange peoples and strange phenomena. And uh, so, uh, actually, a guy called Blumenbach invented this idea of Caucasian as being the best race in the world. He, he uh, noticed that he thought the most beautiful women in the world came from the Caucasian regions of Russia. And so he called the white race Caucasians. And he created a hierarchy with other races below the whites. And this was a very useful and seized upon at the time because it allowed Europeans who were spreading over the world to say, well, we're superior to those other people we're encountering. and." Um, they don't seem to be using all the land, uh, and so uh, because we're superior, we have civilization, they don't. We can take that from them. And so race became a very convenient justification for, uh, if you like, theft on a grand scale. And so um, that applies to North America and South America. Europeans arrived here. They said, oh, uh, there's, there are people here, but we're going to legally call this an empty land. Uh, because these people uh, aren't civilized and they are on this racial category well below us. Well, now we, we realize what a story that was, what a myth that was. Uh, but still, uh, race is almost hardwired into our vocabulary and our social structure. And it's going to take a long time for this um, kind of, if you like, a scholarly appreciation of race to kind of work its way out into the, the community. But you see it happening all around us all the time with people it used to be that you would never marry across your racial boundaries. And fortunately, today, a lot of those taboos have broken down.